What is it? Type N connectors. So I uh, I wanted to make a set of test uh, or a test lead with a Type N connector on one end. Why? It's a secret. I can't tell you that yet. <clears throat> but you know, I'd never put in a Type N connector on. And of course, when you buy these these items from Amazon, you know, you get like 18,000 of them. Uh, I think I bought the, the higher of the quality, and it even tells me right here that these are high quality. Where is it? Uh, but I just needed, actually I just needed two of them, and I was looking for that, so I don't know. And since I had never done these before, I didn't want to go and buy some Amphenols and destroy them or something. So I'll give these a shot. I think all in all they're pretty much standard. They're solder the pin and crimp the uh, the collar for the, the for the ground. The only thing is, is I was looking online, and and I can't find anywhere where it really gives me the dimensions of what to strip the wires to. You know, I mean, it's uh, kind of like back in the old days with coax. You know, everybody had a dimension. Usually they were wrong, or I guess close enough to get you in the ballpark. But uh, now everybody's using the the, the cutting tool the cutting tools and uh, this one to tell you the truth I'm not even really sure what this is for but it doesn't give me the cut I want anyhow so I had to kind of do some experimentation and like I said never did one of these before never even never even put together an end type connector before the closest I had was when I bought my uh, uh, my watt meter you know the bird it had it had n-type connectors on it and I, I quickly changed them over to uh, SO239s but that did it did come with adapters and this is an SO or n-type to SO239 and if I screw things up too bad I still have this uh, but one of the things I want to point out is that center pin because this was one of the things I didn't know that center pin comes almost to the very top of that shield that's, that's all around it so the uh, I'll find something I can point with. So the this pin in here comes almost to the very top. It's, it might even be the very top and it's just an optical illusion. It makes it look like it's not because it's you know inside a dish. But anyhow it comes almost to the very top. So that gave me my first clue of, of how long I had to make this this cable. So I sat there and kept stripping and checking and stripping and checking the cable that is. Come on. Uh, let's see. And I came up with this. Where Where is it? Let's see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down my uh, my uh, caliper so you can see caliper so you can see uh, about the dimensions. So let's see. I'm trying to work so that it focuses too. Actually, let me move this stuff all out of the way because I know I'll knock it and the pin will get lost. You know, I bought a set of BNCs like this. They were the BNCs a long time ago from eBay, and they were uh, they were on a clearance, and I think I got like 25 of them for $10 or $5 or something, and they're excellent, except they were, uh, they were like mil spec, some kind of Department of Defense stuff or something, and they had no instructions. And I had never put a BNC connector together either. So I did find connect, I did actually find the instructions for that exact connector online and I printed them out. And I think I'm still using them for stuff. But anyhow, so this here, and I'm going to need stronger glasses to look at that. That there, the very tip, I stripped to just under a quarter of an inch. And I'll show you. I'm trying to get this in here without getting my head in here. It's just, well, maybe if I put this over, doop doop doop, there we go. I'm trying to do this while I'm looking at the camera, so it's very hard. So there is, it's actually 0 0.205 inches. So as you see, it's just under a quarter of an inch. And then for, for those of you that aren't uh, in America and you want to see the 
it's 5.6 millimeters, so just under six millimeters as well. I uh, used to be a mechanic, so you kind of get used to that. All right, so that would take care of that, and that does a nice job. And if you look, when I put this on here, I believe the idea is that it goes right up to and hugs right against that the white insulator. So there you go. So now the question is, how about the rest of it? This piece here, I cut down to just, I believe, just under half an inch. So there's millimeter. Let's put it in inches because that's what I'm more familiar with. Yeah, so I have it cut down at about four point, or I'm oh, sorry, point four five inches, and then point four five six, and then for the rest of you that use the metric system. I can't see how bright that is. 11.58 millimeter. 11 point, so what's that? 11.6 millimeter. Uh, just under 12 millimeters. So, and if you look, if I leave this like this and I didn't solder or crimp anything yet, I put this over, making sure that I keep this in view here for you. And if I look over, that fits down nicely up against there. And you can see my center conductor is just about at the very top. So that should be correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back apart, solder that in there, and then we'll, we'll crimp this in and hopefully we'll have a successful connector. But that's what the way that it worked for me with this type of connector, just under a quarter inch and just under half an inch, so I guess overall you'd be stripping just under uh, three quarters of an inch. And like I said, that's the, the stripping tool I have. I don't know, maybe, I don't know what it's for. At, uh, I've used it on different wire, but this wire seems too thin. So let me get things ready and I'll get it soldered and I'll be right back. All right, so I wanna thin the tip there a little bit. And hopefully I have a little bit of solder left. I do. And I'll just tin this a little bit here. Just a wee little bit. Hopefully it still fits in the connector or I'll have to threaten it. There we go. Fits in there nicely. I'm just going to put a little dab of Just a little dab of um, flux in there. Maybe it'll help clean that, that pin up. And you can see the little hole for the solder there. All right. that cool down for a second so I don't scald the heck out of my hands. Uh, and I lost my paper towel. Someone... Oh, I was sitting on it. I knew that. Let's see. Nice. Nice. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit more before I shove it in there because that's Teflon in there. It should be able to withstand that, but just in case it doesn't, I'm scraping off the extra flux too that has stuck on there. So then, the uh, you don't want to make the mistake of a lifetime. Of course, with this it doesn't matter because I haven't put the other end on yet. But always, always make sure that you put your your sleeve on before you. I could fold it backward, probably wouldn't get it on, or just print push that up, but. On this one, I can put it on the other end because I haven't done anything yet. But that's definitely the rookie mistake, and I know I've done it. So I'll slide it over here like so. Okay, 
So there it is up, up that end. There's my sleeve. And this particular one gives me some heat shrink tubing and it's pretty darn big. I think I can get it over this side pretty easily. Yeah. Oops. Everything's sliding off. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is put my actual connector on. See if I get that go up and through. There we go. Nice. All right, and then these little guys here. That's the uh, for the ground, it's the outer shield of the cable, and you can you can trim it. Look, no, it's going to stick. You can trim that so that you don't want it sticking out all around. You know, and look, just would generally look kind of sloppy. You can even trim it afterward, or if you give it a little bit of a turn, here like that, of course as I'm pushing it up. So I actually have a nice pair of scissors that I use for this. And I don't want the kids, I don't want the kids get hold of these ones for cutting their cardboard or something and I'll just cut these I'll just cut this little bit of wire out here that's gonna be sticking out and again if, if you have some sticking out no big deal it just makes it look neater when you have it all trimmed and tucked away and it's not sticking around sticking out around the edge because inevitably as you push this up you're going to get a couple pieces that stick. Still got a couple more that I want to trim away. It's getting better. Yeah, and if you've turned the wires too much, you'll have a hard a hard time getting the sleeve up, kind of like I am right now, because it's made to go straight over the wires, but when you turn them, some of them overlap, so I'll probably have to... There we go. Alright, then you can take your fingernail, and if any of them are sticking or in the way just slide them up out of here and there you have that I'm trying to get it so you can see it okay so there it is there's that so now you want to take your crimping tool all right I'm back I had to flip the jaws I think hopefully that'll work just because the uh, those screws were so big and they, they hit onto the side of the connector when I go to crimp it so let's try it now Make sure that's all the way up in there, pulled tight. And a crimp. It's definitely crimped, I'll give you that. <laughs> wonder if... Uh, I wonder if I should have used a 2.5 crimp, but it doesn't look like it. I forget what size they are. Uh, I crimped it with the, uh, the .213. I think for some reason I thought there was like 229 or something was the size of these. So that should be it. I'm going to crimp down a little bit further into the cable. Just just for neatness sake. Let's see. There we go. And then they give me a piece of heat shrink tubing. So, before I put that on, we'll give it the old pull test. So that 
tip comes almost come where you at let's see comes almost almost to the tip this isn't pulling off and now we'll check it with the continuity tester and make sure that it works and that nothing is shorted so the first thing we want to check is I'll actually plug it onto here so that so that we have a real test Dun, dun, dun. It's tough when you need glasses, you know, as you get older and you got to use glasses just to see things. All right, let's put it on continuity. We think we got it there. Here's our tester. I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. That means we had continuity. I'm going to just check for a short that nothing's shorted. Doesn't appear that anything's shorted. I'll get my cable. We'll get the other end of it. Alright, we can do the we'll test the ground side first because that's the easy side. Perfect. Center conductor. There's that. I gotta pull it off of here. Let's stick it on the center conductor here. You can't see what I'm doing. There's the center center conductor there that's perfect let's see no short to ground center conductor ground nothing so okay we know that that's good so the last step then would be to to slide up the heat shield and put that on so there it goes that's slid up like so let me get all my crap out of the way here and use my hot air gun there it is there we got the one end of the the cable done and on the other end it'll probably be about three foot long and on the other end I'll put a uh, PL259 and it'll be basically for testing from uh, a radio to one of these that that's what I need for now maybe where am I at maybe maybe it's someday I'll need uh, let me zoom on um, I'm gonna say yes yeah, so I may end up making a, a different one but for now I just want one that has a type N on one end and an SO 239 on the other or PL 259 on the other end and I know you all know how to do well I don't know if you know how but practice on those because they're pretty common but anyhow, the main thing I wanted to show you was what my dimensions turned out to be for these type of connectors. And I'm sure they're all pretty similar. At least you can probably calculate it now by using mine. And uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps you out.